I'm here with Aldo Manahutu, who's with Indonesia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He's the director in charge of training for senior diplomatic staff. Now, this ministry in Indonesia is known as one of the most professional, and uh, Pa Aldo has been dedicated, I think is the word, to ensuring that the staff are aware of the changes in digital technology and how that can apply to the work they do. So we're going to hear more about that now. Thank you so much for your time. Can you tell me firstly why you believe it's important for diplomatic staff to look to digital technology and how they can use it in their everyday work? Well, diplomats, I mean, by definition, they should be adaptable to various and the circumstances, environment. And nowadays we are living in a digital world and it is paramount for diplomats, especially the senior one, to use that technology that is available to all of us. Um, Hundred years ago, we used typewriters. Nowadays, we are into the digital world. So I think um, it's change is inevitable. So the question is the mentality. How do you use that technology and how you try to adapt to new environment? I think that's the key. The key thing. And as you mentioned, that uh, the Indonesian forum is considered one of the most professional one in Indonesia. And to be professional, I think one of the key trait is to be adaptable, and that's what we try to do. Diplomats speak a certain way. Mm. It's not always straightforward. Very much. So you're, you're getting them to tweet with yeah. very few characters. Yeah. But you're also asking them to respond mm. to responses, yeah. which is also not usually mm. very diplomatic. Mm. Mm. Um, so it's been a big adjustment then. Mm. For some of them, yes, it's a big adjustment. Some of them who just as I enter the training, they don't even have a Twitter account or Facebook account or Instagram. So it was a challenge for some 50 years old uh, senior diplomat to start to do what is basically Twitter. First, the idea is that they get to use to, uh, to summarize ideas in the classes very succinctly in one, uh, in one paragraph, in one sentence, one or two sentences. And that's a challenge for some diplomat because diplomat, we have a certain way of writing, um, talking, I mean, try to be indirect in many ways and then in Twitter you cannot do that mm. or in the digital you lose I mean the audience will not pay attention to you a tweet I imagine can easily go wrong mm. if it's not interpreted or mm. or grabbed quickly mm -hmm. is that the kind of thing you're thinking about as well that as diplomatic staff you're operating in a very fluid space and you need to be aware of it mm. yeah they have, we in the very beginning we thought that uh, we told them there is a guideline by the government how you write your tweet. There's several of them, so they have to be very mindful of that. And second, we thought you're adults, and you have to be responsible what you're saying. We trust them that whatever they tweet or whatever they put on Facebook or on, on the social media, um, they are responsible for it, and they have to be thoughtful. At the end of the day, uh, diplomats, when we write speeches, write speeches. We have to be mindful of our audience. Mm. So, and the audience, in, um, mostly nowadays, I mean, you can really, if you use Instagram, it's only for the twenties, um, uh, the twenty until late twenties. Twitter is usually for policymakers, thirty above, forty above, so around around that age. So um, they just have to know which audience they want to uh, target. And now these days. Uh, the foreign ministry is becoming more and more active on digital diplomacy. Not as much because it's just a tool, but it's a place where we have conversation. Where before, if the, the foreign ministry wants to have conversation with the world, it takes a lot of efforts. A lot of effort. You have to tell all our embassies the world, this is the kind of message you will send. These days, it's quite cheap, and then you just have to tweet it. What else about digital technology mm. or the, the future that you see in Indonesia mm. excites you about um, how you can apply it to the mm. service that you're in. With the phone technology it's one-to-one, -one. Uh, with the internet it's one-to-many, mm -hmm. but in the three, five years down the road it's many-to-one, which what I mean the one is the artificial internet and now we are seeing it for Ministry of Foreign Affairs around the world. We need to think about using that artificial intelligence. So it helps us to filter all the noises so that, because if we have to answer all the questions on a daily basis, uh, you can put 100, 1,000 people, it won't be sufficient. So the question is, I think in the, in the long run for the ministry around the world, 
is that how we can harness the uh, the power of the artificial intelligence. We cannot compete with artificial intelligence, it's impossible. We just have to harness it uh, and we should not be feel threatened. Maybe we will feel threatened, but we can use it to alleviate some of the concerns. The, mo the basic thing is that, let's say for consular affairs, instead uh, we have an FAQ, people mm -hmm. just can chat and then the, that artificial intelligence can answer that. It's not that it's not any longer enough for diplomats just to gather information because the information can be can be easily captured by the... So what uh, do you make with it? How do you interpret yeah, it? And then what, analy what deep in-depth analysis, yeah. that's the nuance and that's what the, uh, the technology cannot do uh, in, uh, uh, in comparison to human beings. So it's, it's basically artificial intelligence have, has to become more human, I think. Sounds fantastic, and sounds like you're really enjoying being on the pulse. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs>